Hello. <laughs> well, we've got Marco back and I'm very happy and grateful and relieved for all the wonderful work that uh, Queensland Veterinary Specialists did for, for Marco and also the pet emergency team at North Lake. So fantastic. We're grateful to have him back and he's enjoying his food puzzle, puzzle toys in the background. Now, I wanted to talk to you about finding a balance between doing and being. So what does that mean? Well, basically doing meaning I've got to get my dog to learn how to do this and learn how to do that or stop doing this, stop doing that. Um, my dog has to um, be able to walk on a loose leash or um, stop barking or stop jumping up. Now, of course, I'm not saying that we shouldn't be aiming to help our dogs have basic manners and things like that, but I find that there's a very big imbalance between doing and simply being. And when I'm saying when I say being, I just mean being with your dog, reconnecting with your dog. And I want to just illustrate something. So with a little exercise. So I'd like to challenge you to write down all the things that you'd like your dog to do or that you want your dog that you want your dog to do. Whatever that might be behavior-wise that will make you um, stop getting angry or frustrated or feeling resentful towards your dog or judging your dog or blaming your dog for that behaviour. Now, after you've written out all of those things, I want you to write down what you're willing to do to take action to help your dog to be able to behave in the way you'd like them to. Now, this is a really big stumbling block because when I pose this question to humans, it's usually, oh, hang on, oh, I don't know if I really want to do all that work or that seems a lot of work. And then usually we can, we can think, well, you know, as long as my dog isn't disrupting my lifestyle or my schedule, then, you know, uh, I'm not really motivated to intervene or do anything in any way to change my dog's behaviour because it's not disturbing your lifestyle. But, but let's, let's look at, let's look at the, the holes in that. If your dog's not disrupting your lifestyle, are you, I'd like to ask you, are you spending time with your dog? Are you reconnecting with your dog? Or is your dog a second thought, sitting out in the back on their own for hours on end without anything to do. Um, I ask these questions because we have so many dogs across the world, millions of dogs in fact, that are surrendered to shelters every, every year for various reasons, but a majority of the percentage of dogs are surrendered for their behaviour problems and they're classified as problems by humans, not the dogs of course, because there's always a valid reason for our dog's behaviour in any given situation. So I wanted to I wanted to also just illustrate as well, and this is irrespective of whether you have adopted a puppy or a juvenile dog or an adult dog or a senior dog. And of course, with the COVID uh, pandemic that's happening, there's been an increase in, uh, of course, relinquishment of dogs, but there's also been an increase in adoption of dogs. And so this is really important because... When, we're, when we've adopted a dog, we expect them to fall into our routine and our lifestyle very quickly, um, or a puppy. But as soon as we get a puppy or a dog home, we have to get them to do this or do that or, or um, be able to fit into our lifestyle. And oftentimes, we forget about just being with our dogs and reconnecting with our dogs. And... I want you to also reflect on whether you've just recently adopted a puppy or a, a, a dog or a cat or any other companion animal for that matter. Um, and the first time you laid eyes on that animal and you felt that joy, that warmth, that empathy and that compassion, that's reconnecting with, with our companion animals. And so in order for us to help our animals live in harmony with us, it's really important that we are coming from a place of compassion and empathy. Um, and reconnecting with them is the first step in doing that. And that's also the first principle of being a guardian for our animals. Um, and so 
I really just wanted to also mention that if you're in a situation where you're feeling frustrated or angry or resentful, judging your dog, blaming your dog for their behaviour, um, you're actually sitting on the edge of a breakthrough because that's a situation that is screaming out for you to just stop doing and that might be just thinking um, and just be with your dog and reconnect with them. Now, the first, things that I would, the first thing that I would also say is that if you have any animal in your life, um, the best thing to do is to take times, random times throughout the day um, and just in general is to promote calm behaviour because that's the most important behaviour that any animal, including our dogs, that they will ever learn because their learning pathways in their brain are engaged and we're able to teach them new behaviours. They're able to learn new things. And when our dog's learning pathways are engaged, that also means that their emotional state is receptive to learning new things. And that means that when they're receptive to learning, that experience is automatically a pleasant one because if our dogs are in a true emotional state of being able to learn then the environment our the way that we're interacting with our dogs um, their emotional state and also their enthusiasm and their motivation to want to learn is completely aligned and for in order for us to help our dogs align in those different areas um, Emotionally, it's essential that we, as human beings, raise our consciousness and reconnect with our dogs, which puts us in the present moment and also means that we're coming from a, a position of empathy and compassion. And when you're also reconnecting with your dog and you have that sense of compassion and empathy and joy, then... All of those things that you previously previously might have wanted your dog to do dissolve away and that's no longer important in that moment. And so that's a really important, important point um, to really take into consideration, especially when we consider how many dogs across the world right now are being surrendered to shelters for the behaviour problems. So just as a summary, just try to really be conscious of having a balance between wanting your dog to do something or trying to get your dog to do something or stop doing something and simply being with your dog. And once you do that, you'll find that what you thought may have been so very desperately important to you in the past no longer takes such a priority. <laughs>